well, I wasn't planning on doing a video today, but yet here we are down at the bottom of the garden of the greenhouse, and it is a lovely, lovely day. I don't know if you can quite see there, but the, the automatic window is wide open, which shows you just how warm it is in here. It is beautiful. I was out playing golf on Thursday, and it was horrible. It was wet. It was windy. It was a bit wild. It was awful, but today is wonderful. So I've got two jobs I need to do today. First job, I need to pot on the tomatoes. You remember a couple of weeks ago, I was a little bit late getting them started, but they're coming along, they're looking okay. They've been under the grow lights. I've had a bit of a dodgy setup sort of going on inside. So they need to go in the proper grow cupboard thing. We've got upstairs in their own little individual cell trays because they'll come on leaps and bounds from there. And I'll keep potting them up and moving them on and get them going because it's only gonna be about I don't know, four to six weeks before it's time for putting them outside in the polytunnel. So it's not long to go for that next job I've got to do. And it's honestly, it might seem a bit boring, but it's one of the most satisfying jobs you can see done. You might remember, again, a couple of weeks ago, we just started transforming this bottom area of the garden here, tidying it up, getting some new beds in, stuff like that. But what I did at the time was I sprayed down this patio cleaner stuff that's meant to take effect over time. And it has, and I'll show you in a bit, will take effect, but it needs jet washing. So I'm going to give it a bit of a jet washing this afternoon. And there's nothing more satisfying. I don't think it's quite sad saying that, but you know, when you see the patio getting jet washed and it's all dirty, then it gets clean and clean and clean and it looks beautiful at the end of it. So we'll get on. We've just got a small section to do. It's not going to take ages, but we'll get on with that in a bit. But without further ado, let's have a look in here in the greenhouse. Cauliflower's looking good. We started off a load of seeds. I don't think I filmed this. I had a bit of a, a seed sowing frenzy, but it's going okay. Let's just pick this one here. This one is some canasta lettuce, and you can see there's some good, good germination. We'll keep the, the little lids on now. I've got the holes open on the top, so there's some air getting in and out of there, but they're coming on nicely. We've got some Brussels sprouts here as well. Two different varieties looking good. Come and gone all right there as well. I'll try not to trap them in the lid. And I've got one on that side as well. But everything is looking okay. The beetroot over here is looking good. The, the cauliflowers have come along nicely. These are the, the onions. Yeah, I mentioned these before, the Rinsberger onions. And they're little, they're wee. They've not done much. They're still small. I mean, they're okay. They're firm, they're decent, they're not floppy, they're not dying, nothing like that. They're just not, not grown very much. And I did... I did mention in my last video, I wonder if it's maybe a, something to do with the compost. So I gave them a bit of a liquid feed earlier in the week. So we'll see, we'll see if they pick up, we'll see if they go. But I, do, I don't know if it is the compost, because the compost I've used for everything. And the, the red barrens that I put out are looking all right. Here's the, the squash that's just germinated. You can see it's absolutely flying and everything else is coming along all right. The, the other onions here, which ones are these again? The Bedfordshire Champions. These were sown a lot later, but you can see the size of them compared to the Rinsberger ones. But it's the same compost, it's the same watering, because I water everything at the same time. When I come down, they've had the same feed and whatnot, but who knows? But anyway, the tomatoes are getting potted on today. Speaking of the tomatoes, they're all back here on the Super 7. I brought them along on the Super 7. We've had some some great germination, they come along nicely. It's a little bit dry, so they'll only need a good water and afterwards as well. I'm gonna do two different sorts of potting on. Um, I'll not take you through all of them, there's too many to do all of them. We'll do two different types, show you what I'm doing, but we'll get swapped around here with the other cameras and stuff, and we'll get some filming done. Right, so we're going with the old dual camera set up again today. Hopefully it's gonna work well. It seems to go down all right when we do this in the greenhouse. And I'm gonna sew, let's see, I'm gonna sew the tomatoes in two different ways, you can see, I've already done a row here. Why have I already done a row here? Because I've already filmed this, but I don't think the audio was working properly. So I'm filming it again. So we've already got one row in the cell tray. So what you need to imagine now is me filling the cell tray with all this lovely compost down here. Now, speaking of the compost, this is the Melcourt Silver Grow. It's the one I use all the time for all the sort of seedlings and things I do, all the sort of plants in and around the house, anything I grow from seed, anything I bring on, any little plants. I don't use it generally as a rule of thumb at the allotment it's a bit expensive you want to top up beds and stuff like that Melcourt silver goats are a wee bit expensive for doing that sort of thing so maybe think about a, a different type of compost for that but we'll sew these on in in two different ways and we'll we'll do these ones first so we've got the black strawberry ones and I say they're looking just a, a touch leggy I've not had the the grow light set in the the perfect sort of conditions because I've just been a bit 
just a bit Russian and, and, and all over the place and doing stuff. But I'm going to try and get these set quite deep inside the cell tray. And I'm trying to get them deep set inside the cells for a reason. And if I just pick up this one here in particular, and let me show you this up here. If you can see that on the camera, there's lots of little hairs all the way down the stem. Now, what I want to do is try and get as many of those little hairs on the stem as deep as we can in the cell tray. So I want it to be quite near this first set of leaves here. So the little sort of flat leaves here you can see, the ones that don't have much shape to them, they're the seed leaves and all the little jaggy ones that you can sort of see above, that's the true leaves that are coming on. So if we can get that stem planted nice, nice and deep in a theory, all those little hairs that are on the stem will make a beautiful, beautiful roots for it to make nice, strong plants and these ones i'm doing here are the black strawberry and for those of you who saw me sowing the tomatoes you will remember that i made a bit of a bit of a mistake with the black strawberry when i sowed two lots of brad's atomic grape and only zero lots of black strawberry and i had to go and fix it but once again thank you to everybody who spotted that or right about now i will be potting on brad's atomic grape thinking they are black strawberry. So thank you for that. So you can see there, we've got these in the cell tree. Now, just by sheer chance, sheer luck would have it, on the Super 7, we've got seven of these little quarter size seed trays with seven varieties of tomatoes. And the cell tray we've got has seven rows of four. So I'm going to take four of each of these plants for me to take on for myself, but I need to plant on some others. And I'll come to that in just a second there. Let me pop that down. And we've got these. We've got some yogurt cartons. But what I need to do first of all, if I get my little my little snips here, is we just need to put holes in the bottom. Now the reason I'm doing yogurt cartons instead of my normal plant pots or cell trays or whatever, is because the rest of these plants aren't going to be for me. And I've met I've mentioned this just sort of briefly, once or twice before. There you go, look, you can see the the holes in the bottom there so the the water can drain through and i've mentioned this briefly before that i'm part of a group here in linlithgow called linlithgow farmily which is part of the linlithgow community development trust and it's all about help it's all aimed at helping people grow their own things at home learning how to do it help them out loads of tips and stuff like that we've got a fabulous facebook group that people can come along and ask questions and learn how to do stuff but twice a year we have events and the first event we've already had which was was it last month crikey seems like ages ago now and that was a seed swap and the local allotment association comes along and they do some um seed potatoes as well so they sell seed potatoes and we do a seed swap both at the same time fabulous event and we always follow this up in May, so it's around about the second or third week in May, we'll be on Linlithgow High Street doing a seedling giveaway, or, or seed, or plant giveaway, I should say, because some of them get quite big by then. So all these little extra plants that I'm doing, that I'm going to put in the yoghurt pots, and I've got my, my stack of yoghurt pots here, I like to have a yoghurt with my lunch every day, so if the stock, stock of yoghurt pots, because I'm not wanting to give away my good plant pots, so my my plant pods that I've got over here, with my plant labels and stuff in and whatnot. I mean, I will, I will put a label in these so we'll know what they are, so I'm not giving away random plants. Mystery plants, come and get mystery plants. So we'll not, we'll not, we'll not do that. We will label them, but the yogurt pots are brilliant because it's recycled, it's reused, and hopefully the person who brings on this, this little plant can stay in here for ages. Then the person who gets this can use it, and hopefully use the yogurt pot to plant something else in once the little tomato plants out of it. Well, that is job number one, and kind of job number one and a half done. Let me show you what we've got. We have got lots of tiny little potted up tomato seedlings there. They all look a bit sad. They always look a bit sad. When you pot them up, everything looks a bit sad. They do need a good drink. They're going to go into a, to a gravel tray and we'll water them all from the bottom. The compost is going to soak up all that water, give them a day to a good, a good water and under the lights, a bit of warmth, and they'll look absolutely magic. I don't expect them to be in this cell tray too long. Let me get nice and close, just so you can see the size of it there, the size of the cells that we're using 
who, you know, will be lucky if they're in here for two weeks before I'm moving them on again into the next size up, but it's the right way to do it because if you give them too much compost, they get too much compost, the roots don't grow very strong because the roots don't have to go off looking for nutrition. At least when they're small, they've got to find where the nutrition is, then move them on, move them on. Those roots just keep on growing at the right size. Plus, you know, I'm behind schedule this year, but you can kind of slow down growth if you keep them in the small cells, the small pots, a little bit longer than you need to, you can slow down the growth a little bit. But I need to speed things up at this time of year because it's it's getting beautiful outside. And we've got our little ones here for the, the seedling giveaway. I know I was just saying there about having too much compost, but these are these are gonna be freebies for people, but they're all in the little yogurt pots, and again. Sheer coincidence, there's two of each. So there's enough, two yogurt pots for each variety of tomato. So we've got 14 little tomato plants. I'm gonna do other stuff. I've got some jiffy pellets over there. Watch out for that coming first time trying them, trying something different for the seed seedling giveaway that we're gonna be doing next month. Gonna grow stuff in the jiffy pellets. So again, I'm not giving away plant pots, using different things and different ways of doing things. Anyway, next job on the list and the one I'm looking forward to, gonna get outside. Let's get on, let's get some jet washing done. So that took a little bit longer than expected to get. So the horse pipe, the big, the good horse pipe is blocked or something, it's not working. So I've got my backup horse pipe on the go, but let me just show you here. This is the bit we're gonna do. You might remember, say last weekend, weekend before, whenever it was, we sprayed all the cleaner down on it and it's, it's come up pretty good. You can see it's killed off all the moss and things that were on here. But this is the pressure washer. Look, we've got the double powerful nozzle thing on it. It's the first time using it as well, I got it, I got it last year, we've not had a chance to use it yet, but I would love to show you it all, but it's it's over there, oh, it's hiding over there because the hose pipe we're using is a bit shorter, but what I'll do is I'll pop a link down below in the description and you can go and have a look and see what it's like. It came from Screwfix. Um, I've had the Karcher ones before, I had a Karcher one before, you know the yellow ones that you save everybody with? Not impressed, didn't last very long, did an okay job, didn't last very long, so I'm a little bit skeptical about the cartridge ones. So we went for a different one, a screw fix one. Like I say, I'll pop a link in the description down below. Go and have a look, see what it's like. But the most important thing is, does it work? Is it any good? Well, there's only one way to find out. Job done. Let's have a look, see how it looks. And it looks pretty wet. It's nowhere near dry, but there is loads and loads and loads of mud and dirt and everything that's come off it. So I'm looking forward to when it dries out. When it dries out, I will come along down here and show you this is the next bit I'm gonna do over here. Let me just show you, look at this. This hasn't been done for years. I did one slab over here just to show you the difference between the two, but I'm gonna get the, the patio cleaner down on this. It all needs brush, this bit of stuff all over it everywhere. It needs brush, needs all the dirt away. Then it needs the patio cleaner put down. Then it needs to be left for a while. Then it needs to be jet washed, and yes, in case you're wondering, it was very much an edition of Boys with the Toys at Mark's Allotment Plot here this afternoon, filming by drone, jet washing with a new jet washer. What more do you want than on a beautiful Saturday afternoon? Anyway, that's me done for today. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.